Hello, it's Sandra Pike here from World of Page Atlantic and the Pike Group. So today we're going to do something completely different. And uh, our topic of conversation is going to be about giving back and volunteering. And I don't think a lot of people realize uh, what some of the agents are doing uh, here locally. So what I'm going to do first is just get uh, everybody just to introduce themselves and what brokerage they're at and how long they've been in the business. And then we'll get right into the nitty gritty of what's happening uh, this year. Um, so Ian, I'll get you to start first. Uh, my name is Ian Angus. I uh, work with Royal Page Atlantic here in Halifax and I've been in the business, uh, this is my 14th year. And Donna, how about yourself? Yeah, Donna Candelora with Remax Nova. I've been with Remax from the start of my career. Um, so I've been an agent for 13 years. And Miss Ashley. Uh, Ashley Patterson. I am with the Patterson Group and also Royal Page Atlantic. And I am going into my 11th year. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. 11 years. I, we, I remember we were back at Exit there many moons <laughs> ago. Yeah. So, uh, Ian, like I see you being relentless at our office. You are always with your hand out, you're always raising money. And uh, I really admire that about you. So why don't you just let us know what it is that you've been, been doing and the purpose of it? Well, I mean, the main charity that I support and that the office, Royal Page Atlantic supports is Alice Housing, a shelter for, for women and children. Um, and we do a number of, number of things that I'm involved in, but you know, it's not just me, it's plenty of other people that uh, have to take credit for it too. There's, um, we do a 50-50 draw at in-person meetings, which we haven't done a whole lot of um, lately, but they will start up next week. So anybody watching this, don't forget your tunies. Uh, uh, and then, you know, we do a, a payroll deduction. There's a, a lot of agents that do that. So every uh, a percentage or a dollar amount from each transaction that they do is donated to that charity. Um, so I'm gonna cut, stop you right there. Um, is there with Alice Housing here locally? Is there anything that that pulls you to to do the things that you do for the shelter, or is just that one that you just pick randomly? Is there a situation? no? Well, I I was actually if you go back seven or eight years ago, I was on the committee that chose Alice Housing as our charity of choice. We had uh, a number of different charities come in to the office, and we actually interviewed them. There was there was a panel of myself and three other agents, I believe, and we had uh, three or four different charities come in and present. And Alice Helsing came in, and uh, you know it was unanimous that they they gave the best presentation, and we thought we could help them the best, and we're we're one of their bigger supporters. So. Oh, good stuff. Now, uh, Donna, uh, looking at the news this morning, and I thought of you instantly. You have a big charity this year, so can you tell us about it and what that charity means to you? So yes, I'm one of 10 um, people running for Women or Man of the Year for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, which I'm really excited about. I didn't have really a reason or a specific person that I decided to do this for. Naz Claimy, one of our owners, nominated me and I instantly said yes. And then when you keep telling people about it, they're like, oh yeah, I have leukemia or someone I know has leukemia. A friend of mine's daughter had leukemia. Um, another friend just passed maybe a week before I was even asked to do this campaign. So that's kind of my why is because we can. And as agents, you know, we, we have the ability to connect with a lot of uh, people. So um, yeah, I'm doing it because I can. Yes, absolutely. Now, Ashley, you are very admirable, and uh, I see you like over the past, you know, 10 years at least, uh, you are always giving back to the community in some shape or form. And uh, so the new one that you're doing now, I think you would have adopted it a few years ago. Can you tell us what that meant to you and why you did it? Um, so we began the Ray Hart Memorial Society um, from our dear friend Ray, who was killed by a drunk driver. So can we uh, can we tell people like who he was? Yes, <laughs> I'm just trying to not um, tear up. But 
So Ray was a, a local um, street person who was homeless. Uh, there was a point where he was living in a community housing on English Street in the South End. Um, they did have to pay, I think it was $300 a month for a room. And if you wanted access to the washroom, you had to pay $400 a month. Um, but Ray never net like anytime I've ever seen him and this was you know I moved to Halifax after I graduated high school so I you know the downtown scene in Halifax when I was younger and just built this relationship with Ray he would never ask anything from anyone um but he, I used to drive around looking for him to give him my bottles because he was just kind of like the downtown bottle collector guy <laughs> um so I would and then I started just after he passed away I started just taking all of my bottles to that house so that other people could use um, the funds as well. Uh, but I used to stop and buy him pizza and like have chats with him. And, you know, like he moved from the States, he's ex-military. So, you know, I think like he, he just ended up where he was for whatever reason. Like he does have family around his son and daughter-in-law and grandbabies are here. Um, I think his, I believe his sister does live in Dartmouth as well. So, uh, we started the foundation to give back, not to any particular shelter. Like I've done a lot of volunteering um, with out of the cold emergency shelter as well, uh, where, you know, that's only open from November until April. Um, but like with my other company, we actually did like their plowing um, last year. And now they're getting into more like housing that is supported by the municipality, which is fantastic. Um, but yeah, just, you know, any type of fundraisers that we do, any money would just go back to, you know, a numerous amount of shelters throughout the city or, or picking up supplies that they need. So, you know, like whether it's bedding or food or laundry detergent or anything like that. Right. So yeah, that was kind of the initiative behind that. Very sweet. Now, Ian, uh, with this year, uh, you know, we're finally back in the office uh, next week, I believe. Is there a goal in mind that you would like to see the office raise, you think? Well, I mean, <laughs> the more the better, obviously. Yeah. But uh, I think if with the combined, uh, you know, um, commission donations and the 50-50 draws and the other events that we hold throughout the year, including the, the bake sale at, at Christmas time, you know, I'd like to see, you know, 30 to 50,000 raised. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's feasible and attainable. Um, but of do you course, remember you what, know, do you remember what our highest number was yet? I believe, well, if you take everything into account, I don't see, I don't get the numbers with regards to the commission donations. So I don't know. Oh yes. Okay. But let's say the bake what, sale 50, 50. With the bake sale and the, the 50, 50 stuff, honestly, it, it raises a couple thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. uh, but the bake sale does anywhere from, you know, when we started, we, it was $10,000. I think our best year was $40,000. So we raised just from that one bake sale. I now, think I remember bakes, that one. When we say bake sale, it's there's a lot of other things involved, and people are very generous with their cottages and you know things they donate to these this event. So, so Donna, with the Woman of the Year, you have ten weeks to raise money. Am I correct to say that? Ten weeks. So, how much money do you have to raise in ten weeks? There's no specific amount, but whoever raises the most. Um, get gets the title I guess it's not really about the title but it's we're always in for a good competition we're told yeah. not to disclose the amount um the goal amount that we have but it's okay. six yes. figures um which I'm pretty excited about but also a little nervous um too so we've already started our first fundraiser which is to sell tickets on a Michael Kors bag because I'm a bag I love handbags. I was going to call myself the bag lady, but you know, bags and shoes are my thing for sure. Um, so that's yeah. the first, um, that draw will take place on Saturday. Um, I know that we've done some footfall pools and stuff like that. So yeah, we have uh, a ways to go. Um, we have a casino night at the end of April as well. So yeah. Where's the purse? Do you have it there nearby? Like we're all yeah. like, okay. yeah. <laughs> All my bags Sorry. are like like. Yeah. It's, it's all about the purses, I'm sorry. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh yeah. I, 
And how oh. much are you uh, selling the tickets for? Uh, they're ten dollars each, three for twenty-five, I think, or ten for fifty. So, nice, yeah. nice. Okay, we'll talk after this. A woman can't have enough bags, right? Exactly. And, <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> Well, I'm a shoe lady. I'm not really in, in yeah. purses, but you know, purse is always good to have. I wouldn't decline it. Uh, so, Ashley, do you have any new uh, uh, you, new events coming up, or there, is there another event you may have mentioned? Um, the girls and I are actually doing some stuff for the team and the communities that we live in. So, we're going to do. Um, I'm hoping they're going to be at all the elementary schools so like I'm in Fairview Lisa's in Beaver Bank and Jess is in Middle Sackville um so we're gonna get the fields get bouncy castles um we have a connection for like a juggler which would be kind of cool they can go around and entertain people and it's uh when we do the invite you know bring a piece of of food donation or anything that you could donate that could go to a shelter um I like that bag idea, Donna. I have an extra, like I have a duplicate bag. So I'm like, oh, I could sell tickets on that bag. That's a good idea. <laughs> uh, and so doing, um, for all of our clients, we're doing a movie theater day, in June. And we're also going to do the same thing for anyone who comes to take an item to donate. Nice, nice. Uh, when is Walk a Mile in Her Shoes coming up again, uh, Ian? To be honest with you, I'm not sure if we've solidified a date yet, but uh, I will definitely let let you know. I think it, it'll be something that'll come across the, the office uh, newsletter. For sure. Awesome. But uh, we'll be doing that again at the Oval this you, year. So. You wear the heels well. It's <laughs> skin, skinny ankles of mine. <laughs> So Donna, if someone wanted to, uh, you know, reach out to you now, what would be the easiest way for someone to say, hey, like I want to donate or I want to help out? So there is a link on, I have um, postings on my Facebook and I have them on my website as well. You can click on there to donate directly to that one or um, come to any of my events, buy the tickets on the handbag and yeah. Yeah, well, make sure you send that link so when we post the video today, we'll do that. And uh, Ashley, how can people get in touch with you, like to help you with uh, your donations? Uh, I could be reached many ways email, phone number, um, social media, anything like that. So I can provide my email address if that's the most helpful at the end. Perfect. And I think I would have grabbed that today. So that is a wrap. I can't wait to, uh, great topic today and totally off uh, what we usually discuss. But I think some of you are going to join me just to talk about what's happening in the market coming up. You know, is Halifax headed for a recession? Will our numbers keep uh, climbing the way they have been? So stay tuned for uh, those topics coming up soon. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, thank Sandra. You. Guys. Thanks, Sandra.